All right, guys, welcome to the first official video on Geared. Um, today, I'm going to walk you through my mini 3D printer for the 3D printer challenge on Fugitech's uh, 3D printing site, his YouTube channel. Um, there will be hopefully links below, and most likely this is folks on the Discord watching this anyway, and we already know where we're at. So let's get started. Um, I'm just going to show you kind of the overall layout virtually, because I think you've seen pictures of it printing already. Um, it's cantilever design. The dimensions of the bed are 180 by 180, roughly. Um, it has a height, Z height of about 200 ish. Um, other than that, um, I tried to kind of use not necessarily the same materials that everyone would be using on the 3D printer. Um, it clearly takes a lot of cues from the Prusa Mini, but one thing I did different was utilize just some generic square tubing from um from home depot so let's just start with that let's get rid of this guy you don't need to see it so it's it's pretty simple it's just basically three one ish foot sections of uh, aluminum square tube cut down the length and fit into the uh, frame um the front and rear frame are pretty basic i tried to make them look cool but for the most part are all they are is a couple slabs with some mounts and some holes um the screw holes you see are for just standard, what I call tech screws, uh, basically sheet metal screws. You screw them in there when you get everything assembled. The fit is really tight, so you probably don't even need them. Um, if we jump into here, let's get rid of a couple things so we can see the guts. Um, here's the inside of the, the base. The base is the beefiest part of the whole thing. Um, it's printed with some pretty serious thick walls and infill. Um, this piece here is motor mounts. So this is the base that kind of holds everything together. This is just a slot. There's a couple screw holes to hold the uh, upright in with a couple tech screws. And then the motor mount, this piece is probably the beefiest part on the whole printer because it serves to stabilize the uh the z gantry the z rods holds the z motor nicely hidden down inside there um this piece is massive it's a lot of plastic um past that we've got some cool we got some cool features in here to mount the motherboard we got a fan that ducks the air all the way through it it blows across all your uh um stepper drivers and then it kind of vents it out down the bottom. Let's bring back some features here and we can show you some more stuff. It is a using the uh, MKS Robin E3 Mini. Interesting little board with TMC 2209s and cost about 20 bucks. Cheapest one I could find for 32 bit. Same one I believe Shane is using on his printer. Um, past that um pretty basic case everything bolts together got access to your usb your sd card um we need to have a knob on this don't have enough we'll find that in a little bit um the next biggest piece to build and really probably the most impressive on the whole thing is the uh z gantry slash extruder um, this thing has a lot going on. It's basically got Bontech gears uh, with three to one reduction built into it all in one piece. Motor on this side is for the uh, X movement. This over here is your X motor. So let's open up that a little bit. Let's get rid of the uh, NEMA. And we'll get rid of the cover. And now you can kind of start to see what's going on inside here. Um, this is the actual extruder, so I'm going to get rid of the X motor mount just so we can kind of see inside, hopefully, if it's going to let me. There we go. Um, it's not going to let me. We'll do it this way. We'll have to edit that in, maybe. Um, holds your basic Bontech gears um, with the actual drive gear. Past 
that. Oh, there's a gear. I wonder I couldn't find it. It's not in the right spot. Um, past that, everything else is pretty basic. Kind of the standard cantilever design. The hot end looks cool, but is really pretty simple. Um, it's just a E3D V6 on a pretty narrow little clamp. The belts just slot into these guys here. A couple LM8L you use, the long ones. Um, most of this is just for looks. We take off the grill. We've got a standard, uh, what fan is that? 40, a 4010 blower assembly. We take off the fan duct here. The fan duct is really where all the work is. Um, it holds kind of everything together. It holds the fans. It also has the actual fan duct for your part cooling. If we get rid of that and that, um, you see how the fan, the, this front fan just sits in there and directs air down through here. And then your hot end fan runs all the time. Pretty basic, comes off of this, and your E3D sits inside there. It makes the hot the E3D look huge because this thing is really small. Um, we also have bed leveling. It's just a standard inductive probe. The bed plate has a magnetic uh, energetic, I believe is the brand, uh, bed plate sitting on it. So it senses that pretty well. Um, the bed probe, I think, cost all of three dollars so we added it um, the bed plate the bed the magnetic bed plate was about I want to say it's about 15 bucks but that's definitely an optional part neither of these are needed um, with the with the bed plate and the uh, ABL you're looking at about a hundred and forty ish dollars Take away those two pieces and it gets down to a right about, you know, just a little under 130. Um, so if you're okay with doing manual bed leveling and just putting a sticker on it, you can build this for under 130 bucks. If you want the bed leveling and the magnetic plate, you're looking at just a little over 140. Um, that's really it. Uh, one big change I did make kind of at the last minute was the, uh, the bearings on the, on the, uh, for the Y. I started out with just three. But if you look at my plate here, you can see I added a couple extra holes. I actually bumped this up to using four. Um, it just stabilized the thing so much. Um, I got a lot of bed movement out of this thing. Um, I felt like it was kind of odd that such a small bed would need some that much stabilization, but it did, probably because I'm using very inexpensive components and the bearings weren't super high quality. Um, but putting that fourth bearing on there um, just locked the whole thing down and I'm getting great prints out of it now. Um, I will try to get a couple shots of maybe a test cube or so, or maybe a Batman uh, in this as well. Um, for the most part, um, I went uh, with a whole, I, I, I tried to start out with uh, some form over function a little bit, but it's a pretty functional printer. It works pretty well. And the thing prints fast. Um, I'm, I'm amazed at how this thing prints. This is probably my fastest printer right now. This thing prints so fast. Um, and the quality is pretty good. For a $130 printer, the quality is fantastic. Um, so with that, I'll try to leave you guys with a couple shots of the real thing and a couple prints. And uh, see you guys later.